Okay, hi everybody and welcome to this week's Menopause Matters Live. Um, before we get started, wherever you're watching this, if you are um, not already following me, please do follow, like and share and um, especially give this a like um, if you find it interesting and helpful so that I know that it is the sort of information you want me to share and also so that others get to see it because the more likes um, and shares, etc., on places like Instagram and Facebook, the more people will see it. So today we are talking about one of my favourite topics, which is about how stress amplifies perimenopausal symptoms. And we're going to start off by talking about progesterone because progesterone is a really really misunderstood hormone and it is an absolutely vital um, hormone and it's often overlooked in place of estrogen uh, now of course it's obviously very important for our fertile years because without progesterone we can't um, have pregnancy but also it counterbalances estrogen and prevents symptoms of excess or dominant estrogen like PMS, um, mood swings, irritability, um, breast enlargement and breast pain, heavy periods, painful periods. It's a really important counterbalance to estrogen. It's very important for mood regulation. It has a really calming effect on the brain. Um, I think of it as estrogen's kind of calming big sister. It helps to reduce anxiety. It promotes sleep. It stabilizes moods. And it's very important for our bone health, our skin and our hair health too. But it's often overlooked, as I said, because there's this big focus on estrogen during perimenopause because of the more obvious symptoms like hot flashes and night sweats. But progesterone's effects are much more subtle than estrogen. So it's actually harder to identify compared to the big impacts of estrogen. It can be mistaken very easily for other causes, making it much harder to recognize as a progesterone deficiency. And it's often underdiagnosed as a deficiency. Many don't routinely test it um, due, you know, for perimenopause and menopause. In fact, if you're over 45, you're very unlikely to be tested anyway, or certainly on the NHS. Um, there's so much focus on estrogen instead, but the important importance of progesterone awareness is also limited with some doctors who don't really understand the importance of this hormone during perimenopause and menopause. And it's not used on its own um, as HRT on the NHS. You can get it on its own for uh, if you go privately with a private menopause doctor. Mm -hmm. And in the US, it's much more routinely used on its own. Um, but on the NHS, you're then they're, they're not allowed. They um, their guidance, their nice guidelines say that progesterone should only be given if you're on estrogen as well, which actually makes very little sense. And I've had a lot of conversations with private menopause doctors about this who also don't understand where the guidance comes from and why it's not used on its own, certainly in the earlier stages of perimenopause, because estrogen starts fluctuating wildly for most women in the earlier stages, and progesterone just goes on a very steady decline. So a lot of women don't need or shouldn't be given lots of estrogen during those earlier years, because it kind of adds to the problem, adds to the symptoms. Whereas later in perimenopause towards the end, and as you head into menopause, the requirement for estrogen um, increases. So it's a bit of a gray area, but um, you'll know if you've ever tried to go to the GP and ask for just progesterone, they won't do it. Um, and it's in their guidelines. I still don't understand where it's come from or why, but um, there, there you have it. That's what it is. So um, what I want to talk about, because obviously I don't work with HRT. I'm not a licensed doctor. 
I'm not a doctor at all. And so I don't work with medications. But what I do is help women to improve their overall hormone production to whatever capacity is possible. Now, of course, you know, we naturally lose estrogen and progesterone as we go through perimenopause and into menopause. It's a very natural process. But I've often wondered what women's experience of perimenopause would be if there was zero stress. Would we have the same effects? Would we have the same impact of the loss of estrogen and progesterone? Um, and I wonder whether that we would, and I think probably not. I really do feel that stress is such a massive factor when it comes to our experience of the perimenopause and menopause. Stress exacerbates any hormonal imbalances that are going to occur during perimenopause. And it further reduces, and this is really important, it further reduces progesterone production. There's something that is called the pregnenolone steel. Um, during stress, our body's demand for cortisol, stress hormone, increases. And that's a natural thing. But when we're constantly and chronically stressed, our cortisol production is kept high. Um, and we our bodies aren't, aren't supposed to work in that way. And because pregnenolone um, is a precursor to both cortisol and progesterone, i.e. we need pregnenolone to make both of those hormones, the body will uh, prioritize the conversion of pregnenolone to cortisol, the stress hormone, over other hormones. And that can reduce in this re reduced production of progesterone. So think about it. You're already losing progesterone. Progesterone is the first hormone to fall away during perimenopause. Um, estrogen tends, as I said, to go a bit crazy before it falls away. Progesterone just goes on a steady decline. You know, each month you're going to just produce a little bit less. And for some people, that reduction speeds up. Um, and I think that stress has a big part to play in that. And it increases our hormonal symptoms. So hot flashes and night sweats are made worse by raised cortisol. It affects our temperature regulation, um, our moods and our anxiety can be heightened and lower progesterone can also affect mood and cortisol can contribute to anxiety and irritability. So you can see where this all ties up. And then sleep disturbances, raised cortisol makes it much harder to get to sleep and it can wake us up. Plus low progesterone levels can contribute to sleep disturbances because progesterone is a very calming um, hormone. It's the one, as I said, it's the calming big sister. So lack of progesterone plus increased cortisol can really affect our quality and quantity of sleep. And then there's weight gain and metabolic disturbances. Cortisol is associated with increased abdominal fat and changes to our metabolism, exacerbating the changes of perimenopause and lower progesterone and fluctuating estrogen also affect or can affect insulin sensitivity, which basically in a nutshell means that it's much harder for us to maintain balanced blood sugar and therefore to maintain a healthy weight. So all of these things related to stress, related to loss of progesterone can really have a massive impact on our individual experience of perimenopause symptoms. And I think it's so important that we understand this, because if we don't, we don't do anything about it. And it's all very well just going to the GP and asking for HRT, but you're not dealing with the root cause of, in the first place, which is often the stress element that is happening. So what can you do most importantly? Well, of course, you've got to look at where the stress is coming from. And for everybody, it's different. So there's mental and emotional stress. Um, there's, you know, stress from work, stress from family, stress from what's happening in this bonkers, crazy world at the moment. And, you know, worries for the future. That's one thing. 
And then we've got stresses from um, environment. So, um, you know, our surroundings, the ridiculous amounts of chemicals that we come into contact with, heavy metals, et cetera, that all puts stress on the body. The food that we eat, if we're not eating organic food, if we're eating food that imbalances our blood sugar, if we're eating loads of sugar, if we are um, drinking lots of alcohol, if we are exercising too little or too much, um, working too hard, not having enough fun, not resting enough, not getting good sleep, all of those things affect our stress levels. Um, it's not just about mental and emotional stress. It's all of it added on top of each other, one thing on top of each other that creates a stress load. And that's what the body has to deal with. And that's what raises cortisol and then means that other hormones that we really do need to feel good but aren't essential to life um, are affected. And... So that's where we have to work on first and foremost. That's what we have to focus on first and foremost. And if we don't do that, you know, there's no magic pill. There's no magic thing that we can take. Um, we need to work on that first. I always say to my clients, it's all very well, me helping you to balance your minerals, balance your blood sugar, et cetera. But you've got to deal with all of the aspects of stress if you want to really see the difference. And those that do get the best results and those that don't, um, don't get the best results because I can't control the stress that somebody is having on them or putting on themselves. And, you know, a lot of it is what we do ourselves. We have to take responsibility for that. Um, calming the nervous system. There's lots of things that we can do to help with that, like meditation, breathing exercises and so on. But if we don't take away the stressors in the first place, then we're not going to get the results. So I hope that was helpful. And I think it's really important to understand that. Um, first of all, understand the importance of progesterone because everyone talks about estrogen and nobody talks about progesterone. And I think it's it's as important for sure um, as estrogen, especially for women who are going through the first part, second part, um, and into the third part of perimenopause. So... One final thing this month, I am opening up five spaces for my mineral balance package. Now, I don't normally offer this on a regular basis. Um, it's something that it, uh, I have to limit because of prioritizing the ladies that are doing my six month program. But because it's summer and I have a little bit more time once I've moved home, um, I have got five places for this package. It's really for those who are either not wanting to or can't afford to do my six month program. Um, perhaps you haven't got the time to commit to it um, or the budget. It's really good for those who have other symptoms um, outside of, because my program very much focuses on fatigue and um, the loss of motivation, moods, etc. So this is good for those who have other symptoms and they want to try to resolve them through mineral balancing or just for those who want to understand what their mineral status is and improve their overall health um, and balance. Um, I have places, as I said, five places open until the end of August or until all five places are taken, whichever is sooner. And for the first three people that sign up, I am giving an extra £50 off um, the package price. So if anybody is interested in that, it's open now. You can message me and um, I will get back to you. So um, all you need to do is comment package wherever you're watching this or um, not on YouTube, though, because on YouTube, I won't be able to connect with you because I won't have um, contact details for you. But if you're watching this on Instagram or Facebook, you can um comment package and I can reach out to you on um, Messenger or you can just DM me straight um, directly and I will get back to you, explain what's involved and um, we can go from there. All right. I hope that was helpful today. Any questions, again, pop them, pop them in the comments and I will answer them when I see them. All right. Have a great day. Take care. Bye for now.